Hello and welcome. In the previous video of uh, anthropological theories, we have discussed classical evolutionism, where we have particularly talked about the contribution of E. B. Tyler, L. H. Morgan, and James Fraser. In the next video, we have dealt with historical particularism, which was given by Franz Boas. Then we talked about diffusionism, where we particularly focused on British school, German school, and American school. In this video. we will be doing certain topics which are of american and german uh, diffusionism related topics first we are going to discuss about american versus german school as you people must be knowing that american school was basically influenced by german school but there were certain lacunas in german schools because of which the american school came into the prominence and we will discuss what were those lacunas in the next we will discuss about the clark wisler clark wisler and his concepts of uh, law of diffusion law of diffusion other concepts such as a uh, concept of age area concept of uh, cultural area etc we have discussed in the last video and we will conclude this diffusionism with al crowbers with crowbers topic such as his contribution which was birth and death of civilization birth and death of civilization birth and death of civilization so we will start will start this lecture American school versus German school So the lacunas or the shortcomings of German school was that they could not explain why diffusion took place So they did not explain this concept of why diffusion took place and American American diffusionists tried to solve this question and gave the explanation in following way they tried okay they tried to find why this diffusion took place so first american school of diffusionist they says that imitation of cultural trait by one group from another group is called as diffusion so basically what they defines diffusion as imitation of imitation of cultural traits cultural traits of one group by other group by other group so this is nothing but diffusionism according to american school of diffusionist sometime it uh, looks uh, easy to borrow see there is a very a concept in modern world that if you cannot make something in your own country you will import that country uh, import that from some other country for example if we cannot uh, make some microprocessing chips so we will Im uh, import them from taiwan south korea japan or china or if there is api which we cannot uh, make in india we will import from the various countries so basically the diffusionism is also talks about the concept such as borrowing seems easy so this is a very important thing right that the borrowing seems very easy then inventing then the borrowed cultural traits are useful for the parent culture and they are abundant or common nearby cultural area so we talked we have talked about the cultural area 
if this is a cultural area and this is the center of the co cultural area and there are certain little traditions or little cultures over here so there will be definitely a relation between this culture and the culture at the center and the culture in the periphery they will have a relation so there will be a give and take relation but the area near this particular thing or center will have more influence so we can say that if we found a cultural trait over here we are also finding it here 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 so we can somehow draw a line and then find that yes it is somewhere intersecting at the center of the core at the core right so the borrowed cultural traits are useful for the parent culture then but there are certain limitation to diffusionism there are certain limitations to diff, uh, diffusionism we call them as barriers what can be barrier barriers can be natural such as mountains rivers seas right desert forest or it can be uh, something which is uh, like lack of transportation and means of communication means of communication okay so these can be barriers to the spread of diffusionism or to uh, basically spread of culture in the form of diffusionism so it it is generally argued that german and american school of diffusionism were more or less similar and both were encouraged by museum methodology so as far as museum methodology so it was first started by germans school of diffusionist and then it was later adopted by american american school the link between the german and american was franz boas and his student which is clark wisler was one of the scholar for american diffusionism museum methodology it means that when uh, there are some artifacts or element of culture which are, they find they will arrange them systematically first ac according to the time frame and second according to their found geography so if they are found near uh, this particular area they will be kept near to each other the one which will be found farther they will keep it farther so that is how they see that how the cultural diffusion has taken place from point a to point b so american diffusionist received inspiration from german and museum methodology of cultural circle theory so now we'll talk about the Cla uh, clark wisler's law of diffusion this is second last topic clark wisler's law of diffusionism law of diffusionism law of diffusionism the cultural trait tend to diffuse or spread over in all direction so if there is a cultural trait here it will spread in all direction it is not something that it will be restricted to certain direction only and that will be in a part such as concentric circles that will spread like this okay that will make and then there will be sub subcultures here clear okay so now now what wisler's approach was definitely superior to austro german or wisler's approach wisler's approach of cultural area and age area was superior to austro german approach 
they were it was superior than both um, uh, british as well as german school of thought diffusionism because it was more historic it was uh, something which was combining which was combining economy polity various organizations and then it would come to a conclusion hence we call this approach to be more holistic in nature next point here is that it was quite empirical because it tried to produce certain facts or uh, the evidence or proof or at least a research or facts or data to support their uh, views he showed that there are some steps which should be taken to construct a cultural area cultural area so for uh, the criticism that will follow to his cultural area is, is that that many anthropologist felt that the cons uh, concept of cultural area is static many of the anthropologist felt that the cultural area concept of cultural area is static and it does not have a vast uh, historical depth and sometimes it is too narrow too narrow or no historical depth second was because cultural area was constructed on the basis of food so the cultural area it was constructed taking account the area called as food as a criteria so the anthropologist questioned the very idea of food or the very idea of cultural area through food that will this cultural area change if we change food as a concept if we uh, add a totem or if we add something called as a form of ritual or if we take clothing so if we choose any of it that is uh, this particular composition of cultural area will remain static or change was not answered by the concept of cultural area people were uncertain regarding whether cultural area can be constructed on wider region so so wider region can this cultural area be constructed on wider region was also one of the question which uh, were basically the short uh, doubts that were asked by the anthropologist now wisler was aware but he could not solve any problem so it wasn't like he was uh, ignorant of the fact no he knew the fact but he couldn't solve the problem and the concept of age area was relevant at that time see what concept of area uh, age area concept of age area so what it says that from if this is a core or this is the center or core of the cultural area if we find a trait nearby consider this to be b so if we find a trait nearby here it will be uh, younger and if we find a cultural area somewhere here which is considered to be z so it will be older so that is what is said in age area age area means if a culture cultural trait is found near by the core it will be younger in nature and if it is found somewhere far from the core it will be older in nature but that was relevant in the time when there was no communication or there was lack of communication and transportation but today that situation is not there if anything happens within a week that trend over internet and people are trying to do that type of thing so basically this concept of age area is does not hold a significance in modern world does not hold a significance in modern world now this was uh, some of the criticism to the clark wisler's theory now the last topic here is 
Grovers, A.L. Grovers, Birth and Death of Civilization, Birth and Death of Civilization. Grover made use of diffusion model and gave new approach to the concept of cultural area. So he gave new approach to cultural area to cultural area, new approach to cultural area. He was more interested in understanding the macro changes. he was more interested in understanding the macro changes so he did not use cultural area rather he began with some uh, something called as rise and fall of civilization so he wanted to study this changes at macro le level so he did not use the concept of cultural area rather he used a concept called as rise and fall of civilization he said that civilization is a cultural complex and it merges or it emerges emerges from a lot of borrowings from other culture he says that civilization is basically a cultural complex which forms after a lot of cultural traits combines with each other and emerges in the form of civilization now the borrowed element are systematized modified and transferred so that they become chain of culture so here he said that he says that the borrowed element the borrowed elements the borrowed elements are systematized modified and transferred are systematized modified and transferred so they become chain of culture and hence that becomes a part of chain of the culture see different culture are carried forward and they are evolved into civilization and which reach reaches to the final point we call it as cultural climax that is the topmost part of any civilization it is almost like culture center of clark wisler so basically what clark wisler says is the similar thing said by krober but in different way that is what he studied in the form of rise and fall of civilization now when this particular that is the cultural complex it reaches to its climax 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 of civilization it becomes hostile to the other things it becomes hostile to changes hostile to changes so what happen when this civilization this borrows first it borrows a lot of traits from every other uh, cultural elements or small units but when this civilization reaches its climax that is the final stage of uh, any civilization or uh, matured stage of civilization it becomes hostile to changes hostile to the new incoming cultural traits it becomes hostile to the new emerging cultural traits and this closing of the door this become routinized and the progress stops and progress stops so after reaching climax the civilization will be become hostile to the incoming traits and when the civilization becomes hostile to the incoming trait the progress in the civilization will stop and 
all of them which basically all of these cultural units cultural uh, traits which were contributing in the growth of civilization when it will reach to the climax will be no longer a support to that civilization and as each pillar of the civilization that is made from the cultural traits they uh, become weak the civilization starts falling it is very simple see if this are some of the cultural trade on uh, foundation of cultural traits on which the whole civilization lies and these are basically the cultural traits but this cultural traits eventually will will get older and will need replacement or else they'll be broke so at this point what will happen a new incoming cultural trait new trait will replace and hence the pillar survives and become even stronger similar thing happen with each one of them but when this climax is reached when the civilization reaches its climax a climax it become hostile to the changes or new incoming cultural trait and the cultural stop flourishing hence crober says that diffusion is increasingly important for building civilization and he gives a number of uh, he try to give macro level approach which have been summarized or substantialized into a number of examples so he say first he says that this concept of uh, rise and death of civilization uh, rise and fall of civilization was carried forward by robert redfield robert redfield robert redfield he made the distinction between high and low culture high and low culture high and low culture so they can also uh, they can also be called great tradition and little tradition this is basically greater tradition and little tradition this is also called as greater and little tradition uh this concept is extremely useful in the study of peace entry this little tradition and great tradition as in concept is important for the study of peace entry he regarded uh, the great tradition and little tradition as two dimension of civilization because uh, the little tradition is something which it uh, have associated with peace entry and simple societies and the greater tradition is something which is associated with urban society urban society now later this uh, red fields model of greater tradition and little tradition was applied in various countries like mexico india china right and they found they also applied this type of model and that was possible right it was uh, its application was possible in this scenarios also for example lp vidyarthi lp vidyarthi he studied the sacred complex of gaya greater tradition and little tradition so this lp vidyarthi's contribution will study in paper 2 so just wait for a few a uh, few moment uh, we will have a separate thing over here also the next important and the last topic is that in the indian con concept mckim marriott mckim marriott lp vidyarthi and Milton Singer Milton Singer basically they were some of the scholars who shows that the nature of diffusion at different level of indian society happens 
Thus, Krober used the concept of diffusionism to explain his theory of the rise and fall of civilization. Later, this model was used in different culture across the globe. So, thank you for watching, and this was all about diffusionism. In the next video, we will meet with structuralism. Thank you.